Hi guys, welcome to this faction guide about the spaceship eating dinosaurs called Wraith Cabal. In this video we will have a look at how the first round can be played with two different strategy cards, what technologies to research and what other devouring faction abilities that these evil guys got. Before heading into the first round we will have a look at some of Cabal's abilities and a game mechanic called Capture Units. Let's start with the game mechanic about eating, I mean capturing units, and that is that we can place other players' non-structured units on our faction sheet, and then we can do some cool things with those. We can capture units in various ways. Sometimes we take them directly from the game board, and sometimes we take them from their reinforcements. Either way, the units we captured are no longer available for the player that we took them from. And the only way that the other player can get his units back by himself is by blockading one of our space docks or dimensional tears as they are called with this faction and I will get back to these in a minute. The Wool Wraith Cabal has five different ways to capture units. The first one is their faction ability called Devour. And this ability is triggered whenever you participate in either space or ground combat and you get to capture all the units that are destroyed during the combat. The destroyed units are placed on our faction sheet and are no longer available for the other player to produce. The other players better be careful not to lose too many carriers to the Cabal player, otherwise he will have a hard time moving his ground forces around to where he needs them to be. So how are we going to use these captured units? And this is where our second faction ability comes into play. It's called Amalgation and it's triggered whenever we produce units at one of our dimensional tails and when we return the captured ships to the original owners, then we get to produce the corresponding ships for free. Or we can pay the resources to produce the units, then we get to keep the captured units on our faction sheet, and then maybe they will never get their units back. So if it looks like that the Cabal player wants to keep all of your units on his faction sheet, then you must blockade one of his dimensional tails, so that he must return all of your units back into your reinforcements. The World Wraith Cabal came from another dimension, and all of their space docks are gateways to that dimension. They are called dimensional tears, and they work differently from the regular space dock. First of all, the dimensional tear got a production limit on 5 units per production. Normally, a space dock uses the resource value for a baseline number, in this example 4, and then you can add 2 more 4, the space dock, so a normal space dock on this planet would be able to produce 6 units every time, but ours got a fixed value of 5. Another ability that is different with the dimensional tear is that it can support up to 6 fighters without the need of capacity in any ships in the same system, whereas the ordinary space dock can only support up to 3 fighters. And lastly, each dimensional tear is also a gravity rift, and that means that we can add 1 to the movement value of each of the ships that is about to exit the rift. But with a significant change compared to the ordinary one, because with the ordinary gravity rift we have to roll a die for each ship that is about to exit it, and if we roll 1 to 3 then that ship is destroyed by the centrifugal forces. But we don't roll any dice when we exit our dimensional tails, so with that extra movement speed we can do some pretty cool moves around the game board, and I will show you an example of exactly that. We unlock our commander by having units in three different gravity rifts, and it can be in any combination of the ordinary ones and our dimensional tails. And when we do unlock him, then we can produce up to two fighters or two infantry in excess of our ordinary production limit. So we want to have at least one more dimensional tear out on the game board as soon as possible, or all three of them, if not for unlocking the commander, then for having the extra movement. With our agent, we can convert another player's commodities into trade goods in the same moment as they are replenished. And we do that in exchange for capturing one of their units from their reinforcements with a production cost equal to or lower than their commodity value. But it has to be on some other player. We cannot play the agent on ourselves. We start with two units with capacity and three infantry. And that means that we can gain control of up to three planets in two different systems. This is quite okay, but not optimal. This is a high complexity faction. We start with two ships with capacity, but also movement two, because of the gravity rift we start in, 
and that gives us so many more options when it comes to taking planets in the first round. So instead of showing how the first round can go with three different strategy cards, I have only included two in this video, but instead I have added a map analysis section so that we can explore some of the many options that we got. And I will come back to that a little later in the video. Now let's have a look at how the first round can go with the leadership strategy card. But before we take our first turn, it's important to remember that we start in a gravity rift, and that means that our carrier and our dreadnought can move two systems instead of one. So when we consider what planets to take in the first round, we shouldn't just look at the three adjacent systems here, but we can actually look at the entire next ring as well. And this system out here is actually pretty attractive to us because it got six influence on it. But I think it's a little aggressive to start by taking that in the first round, but I will probably go for that system later in the game. So as our first turn, we can activate on Lysis and Velnor here, and we will move out there with our carrier, two infantry and two fighters. Let's explore Lysis here. Let's see what we get. Abandoned warehouses. You may gain two commodities or you may convert up to two of your commodities to trade goods. And since we don't have any, we will gain two commodities like so. And let's have a look at Velno. Functioning base. You may gain one commodity or you may spend one trade good or one commodity to draw an action card. So let's spend one commodity to get an action card. Emergency repairs. All right, we can't use that in round one, so never mind that. And then it gets to be the construction player here. And let's say it's the Titans of Yule. So they play the construction strategy card immediately so that they get to place two mechs. But lucky for us, we gain control of this system as our first action. And that means that we can spend a token here. And we have already locked down the system to place one dimensional tear on well -known. And after the construction player, it gets to be the green player up here, and he plays the trade strategy card immediately. And that means that we can use our agent. After another player replenishes commodities, you may exhaust this card to convert their commodities to trade goods and capture one unit from their reinforcements that has a cost equal to or lower than their commodity value. So we will do that. And lucky for us, they are at least a three commodity faction, so we grab a carrier from them. And then the warfare player takes his turn and it gets to be us again. And as our second action, we will activate on Ivera here and move out there with a Dreadnought and one infantry. And let's explore the planet. Freelancers, you may produce one unit in this system. You may spend influence as if it were resources to produce this unit. But unfortunately for us, we don't have any influence at all. So we can't do that. And then everybody else takes their turns and it gets to be us again. And now we can play the leadership strategy card and we will gain three command tokens by doing so. And now when it gets to be the warfare player, we really hope that he plays his strategy card so that we can produce units in our home system on the secondary of that. But unfortunately for us, he doesn't. So when it gets to be us again, we have to activate our home system. And then I will place one mech on our self assembly routines because that is exactly what this technology allows us to do. And then we can return the green carrier to that player and then produce one of our own for free by doing so and then we can spend the four resources on our home planet to produce two infantry one destroyer and one cruiser and then they are ready to move out in the next round so by doing this we have gained control of three planets in two systems we have built one more dimensional tear we have placed a mech on self-assembly routines and we have produced some units in our home system that are ready to gain control of perimeter in the next round the good thing about the leadership strategy card in round one is that we take our turn before the construction player and that means we can gain control of one or more planets before the construction player eventually plays his strategy card. And in this way we are guaranteed to be able to produce a dimensional tear outside our home system in round one. And we also get to pile up on command tokens which is always useful. And if you want to see more first round demonstrations for other factions, then make sure to click the subscribe button below and get notified when the next video comes out. And now let's have a look at two more ways we can capture units. And what our mechs can do is to capture our own infantry in case they are destroyed during ground combat. And with our flagship we get to capture all units that are destroyed during combat in a given system. So let's say that we start rolling for space combat here and we produce a couple of hits and destroys 
the carrier and of course it gets to roll as well. Oh, and it also makes a hit. So we can capture one of our own units here and then we can proceed to bombardment. And let's see if we hit on a five. We did, so we get to capture one infantry there and then we commit the three infantry. We didn't make any hits and neither did the purple player. And now we destroyed the purple player and also captured his unit. And if he destroyed any of our infantry, then we would capture those units as well. As mentioned earlier, we can do some pretty crazy moves with our dimensional tears. And if we place them like this, then we can actually use this carrier to gain control of Megator Rex. Because if we activate that system, then we can use the gravitational forces around all of these, fly all the way back to our home system, pick up some more infantry and possibly a few more spaceships, use the gravitational forces all the way back and land on Megator Rex. And now we have sufficient firepower to both win the space combat and the ground combat. And it is perfectly legal to use the extra movement speed more than one time per activation. All right, let's have a look at how the first round can go with the construction strategy card. And similar to the leadership demonstration, we will gain control of Lysis and Wellnor here. And let's see what we get. First, we get a functioning base. So we gain one commodity. That's great. And let's look at Wellnor. We get an industrial relic fragment. That is great. And let's just say that the trade player decides to play his strategy card immediately. And we remember to flip our agent so that we can convert his commodities into trade goods, but also take a ship from his reinforcements and capture it on our faction sheet. And now it gets to be us again and we decide to play the construction card and we do it early because then the other players have less opportunities in what planets they can produce either space dock or PDS on. So let's do that. And we will place a dimensional tear here out on Wellno, like so. And since it doesn't make any sense to place two dimensional tears in the same system because then we won't gain the benefit from the gravitational forces, we produce one PDS and place it on Lysis here. And as our third action, we can fly out here to Evera with our Dreadnought and one infantry. Let's see what we get. Get another relic fragment here. And this time we are actually lucky. So the Warfare player already plays his card now. And that means that we can produce units on the secondary of that in our home system. So we spend a token from our strategy pool and we quickly remember to use our self-assembly routines because then we can place a mech on Acheron here. And now we have four resources to produce for. And I would suggest that we use two of them on a cruiser, two infantry and one destroyer here. And we return the carrier that we captured earlier to produce a carrier for free, like so. And when it gets to us, we can take our fourth and last action. And now we can activate the Rigel system out here, fly out there with our carrier, one mech, one infantry, and one more here. And we might as well take a little bit extra with us. And let's explore Rigel 1 first here. Let's see what we get. Core mine. If you have at least one mech on this planet, or if you remove one infantry from this planet, gain one trade good. That is great. And it is always a good idea to explore hazardous planets with mechs if you have the opportunity to do so. So that's why I placed the mech on Rigel 1. And now let's have a look at Rigel 2 and see what we get. We get a blue tech skip, which is great. I'll add that later. And here we get abandoned warehouses you may gain to commodities or convert up to two of your commodities to trade goods. And we have a single one. So we might as well convert that one. And of course, remember to pay the resources for the production. And with that, we have gained control of six planets. And we could only do that because we could produce units on the secondary of warfare here. We have placed a dimensional tear on Wellnor. And we remembered to use the self-assembly routines to place one mech when we produced the units. And with this, I think we have gotten a pretty good start. The construction strategy card is my preferred choice. So if no one else has picked it during the strategy phase, then I would for sure pick it. In a recent game, my neighbor on the left were playing the Wurrith Cabal. And in the first round, he decided to place a dimensional tear in our shared equidistant system. And then in the following round, he also decided to research the faction technology called Vortex. And this technology works in tandem with his dimensional tears. So if I place a unit in one of the adjacent systems, and that is almost my entire slice, 
then he can exhaust that technology and all of a sudden a corresponding unit from my reinforcements goes through the vortex and lands on his faction sheet as a captured unit. He got one cruiser from me in this way before I took the planet and the space dock away from him and that costed him way more than the cruiser did to me. Placing a dimensional tear in the equidistant is a bit opportunist in my opinion and I think I will almost always try to destroy it if that happens. Well, unless he, before he places it, makes a deal with me to make sure I'm compensated for all the ships I'm going to provide him with. While making this video, I had a good debate with my Twilight Imperium sensei about placing dimensional tears in the equidistant system. His argument is that it's a good idea because it makes the vortex technology so much more effective. And my argument is that I wouldn't tolerate having a dimensional tear in that system. So please let us both know in the comments below whether you would place your space docks in the equidistant or not. And speaking of dimensional tears, let's have a look at the upgraded version of it. And with our upgraded dimensional tear 2, we get a fixed production limit on 7 instead of the 5 we started with originally. So now we can produce two more units every time. And that is similar to when upgrading the ordinary space dock from tier 1 to tier 2. And besides that, we get a significant fighter capacity increase from 6 to 12. And here it's good to remember our commander because we can still produce up to two infantry or two fighters in excess of the production capacity, bringing that up to a total of nine. But in reality, I don't see much use of this unit upgrade, so I would most likely not research it. And the last way we can capture units is with our hero. It says, each other player rolls a die for each of his non-fighter ships that are in or adjacent to a system that contains a dimensional tear. On a 1 to 3, capture that unit. If this causes a player's ground forces or fighters to be removed, also capture those units and then purge this card. And this is similar to our Vortex faction technology, because our hero can also capture units that are adjacent to our dimensional tears, which just underlines how important it is to get these out on the game board. The hero is not a game-winning one, so I would probably already play him in the mid-game whenever I think there are sufficient fleets in systems adjacent to my dimensional tears. And I would do it primarily so I could produce those captured units again for free, but of course also to weaken any uh, threatening enemy fleets. As I mentioned earlier, we have some interesting choices in our slice, so let's have a closer look at those. And the first system we can consider is the Arenam and Mir system out here. And we can take that with our carrier, one cruiser, two fighters and two infantry. And hopefully we will have enough plastic here to protect it from the white player in case he wants it back. And the reason why this system is interesting is because of the six influence out here. Because those are equal to two command tokens whenever leadership is played. And we will have a bigger need for influence and command tokens later in the game than we have for resources, simply because we can return the units we have captured earlier in the game whenever we need to produce more ships. We can also go for Rigel 3 here because it got a green tech skip on it, and that means that we can research biostems directly. And with this technology, we can unexhaust our Vortex technology, so we can use this twice in every game round. Let's say the white player has gotten a little close to us here. We decide to exhaust this card, and then we can grab one of his Dreadnoughts for free from his reinforcements. Then we can use Biostems to unexhaust this technology. And then when it gets to be us again, we can capture another Dreadnought from his reinforcements. And the next time we can produce units, we can produce two of our own Dreadnoughts for free and that will for sure push the white player away from us. We can also fly all the way out to our conveyor that has enough influence on it to buy another command token whenever leadership is played. But it is also a planet with a blue tech skip on it. And with that, we can get direct access to the sling relay technology. And this one says, exhaust this card to produce one ship in any system that contains one of your space docks. So let's say we have placed a space dock here on Lysis, and then we can exhaust this technology. And then we can return a white dreadnought and produce a red one of our own. And the sling relay also works in tandem with biostem. So if we have that technology, we can exhaust it to unexhaust this. And then we can do the exact same thing once again. And with this, we have taken two actions to produce two ships, making us stronger 
for even more powerful moves later in this round. And it can also be relevant for us to go for a plant with a red tech skip on it, so it could either be Velno or Mir out here, because then we will have easy access to the assault cannon that requires three red technologies. We start with self-assembly routines, and we are most likely going to research the Vortex technology. So this red tech skip planet can be the third one, and then we can research assault cannon. And it says, at the start of a space combat in a system that contains three or more of your non-fighter ships, your opponent must destroy one of his non-fighter ships. So if we participate in space combat out here with these three non-fighter ships, then the assault cannon immediately destroys this, and then our devourer faction ability kicks in, and we get to capture that unit. When you either build or select your map slice, I would recommend that you prioritize influence over resources, since command tokens most likely will be your limiting factor in the late game. When it comes to what technology to research, then we start with self-assembly routines, and that gives us access to the Vortex faction technology, and this is probably the first one I would go for. And these three I demonstrated earlier is the ones I would strive for in the mid to the late game, because I think these are super powerful and works great with the abilities that the Bull Wraith Cabal got. And then we have, of course, unit upgrades that we can go for, and with these, we have the third and last faction ability called Rift Melt. And it says, when you research unit upgrade technology, you may return one captured unit of that type to ignore all of that technology's prerequisites. And that basically means we can return a Dreadnought here to the white player, and then we can ignore all the prerequisites and get the Dreadnought too. So obviously, what unit upgrades to go for, of course, very much depends on what units we are able to capture. The technology path for the Wool Wraith Cabal is fairly flexible because it depends both on your immediate needs, on what you want to accomplish right now, but also which technology skip planets you have available now and later in the game. Getting a good start with this faction requires that you pay attention to what strategy cards the other players pick, because we want a dimensional tear out on a planet outside our home system in round one. So if someone else takes construction, then we can pick leadership, diplomacy or politics to make sure that we can accomplish exactly this. On the other hand, if you want to produce units on the second area of warfare and move them out in round one, then we can go for the technology card because then we will have our turn after the warfare player, increasing the chance a little bit. But only a little bit because we don't have that many actions in round one before we have to pass. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more Twilight Imperium content, and if you want to check out your opponents, you can find more faction guides here.